of the things that uh, primary care providers have to deal with quite a bit is the issue of febrile seizures and the difference between simple febrile seizures and complex febrile seizures. Can you help to describe what that difference might be and whether there's any differences in the management for those patients? Okay, that's a good question. The definition of febrile seizure, be it simple or complex or complicated, comes from old data that looked at thousands and thousands of children. And what discriminated the two was the duration of the seizure, the, com the focality of the seizure, or the repetitive nature of the seizure within a given febrile illness. So if you have any of those features, seizure longer than 15 minutes, which is historically derived data, but it was 15 minutes, um, focal, meaning part of the body's involved, not all of the person at the time, and if it's repetitive within a given illness, more than one seizure within a 24-hour period, then you have complicated or complex febrile seizure by mm -hmm. definition. The opposite of that, short seizure, non-repetitive, generalized, is a simple febrile seizure. Complicated febrile seizures account for about a third of febrile seizures, and the complexity factor carries with it some weight of identifying those who may have an increased risk of epilepsy, not just simple febrile seizures that don't carry much of an increased risk at all. So if you're in the office and you're addressing a child with a febrile seizure, getting a description of the seizure, the duration, the repetitive nature of it, identifying it as complex or complicated versus simple would then sort of tell you what to do. And the next step in complex febrile seizures, because a certain subset of those kids will have underlying lurking epilepsy not yet manifest as afebrile, we would recommend getting an EEG on them as a screening test. Um, other than getting an EEG, because a fair number of kids do have complex febrile seizures and don't go on to develop epilepsy and just have febrile seizures that's outgrown, we don't recommend treating or doing anything differently, just the screening EEG. If it identifies a problem, then you'll go on a little further. If it is normal, which most will be, then they would be treated the same as other children in terms of recurrent febrile seizures are offered preventive mm -hmm. measures, but otherwise you're not placed on any anticonvulsant. And would it be a um, advisable recommendation that for primary care providers who have identified a complex or complicated febrile seizure in a child that they incorporate a fever management component to their care plan? Absolutely. I think the um, vast majority of kids have one or two at most febrile seizures, so they're not going to be, and the biggest risk factor for that is their age of onset. So if they're 12 months old, they're very more likely to have another febrile seizure. But um, you'd have to anticipate that they might, and it would be good for parents to know how to respond and what to think of. So if anyone's had a febrile seizure, be it simple or complex, having a plan, a management plan for handling fevers is a good idea. Complex, perhaps a little more than simple, um, but I think in both cases. Just to kind of cover the span of age, the febrile seizures peak at around 16 months. They can begin as early as six months and they can last as long as six years in terms of the vulnerability or propensity to fevers causing a seizure the vast majority peak at 16 months and by age two are outgrowing it. So it's a kind of a big peak in the 14 to 24 month range that covers about 80% of them. So if you get to age two, two and a half, you're getting to the point of less and less chance of having more febrile seizures. 